Hello, hello guys. Once again, welcome to Farming in Africa. Yes, today I'm standing on top and I am on the stairs of the goat pen because something exciting has been happening here and I want to share with you guys the new models and the new changes that I've done to our goat pen. So come along and um, let me show you. So as you guys can see, to my left is actually the goat pen. And over the years, I've been trying different ways to actually make this pen looks modernized and demarcated nicely. So basically, this is the entrance to the goat pen. This is how they enter. And I had this yard in front of me and I always knew that I wanted to demarcate it, right? So we have done it. And today I wanna to walk you guys through it. So basically when the goats get um, down, they basically walk through these two nets, right? Seems like a prison yard, but it's not. So the goal is for me to put um, a scale, their scale is inside, put it here so that anytime they walk through, we are able to weigh them. So when they come, they basically walk through here and they just walk and this side is a different sector, that side is a different sector. So this is their playing ground and I know most of you have heard of exercising ground, playing ground, this is it. So let me show you guys. So basically, once they move, they come in here and this is where they play, they exercise, they do all the activities here. We have tires here, and then we also have a box here where we feed them with dry brachyria grass, right? So as they are playing and hanging around, they also have some dry food here that they can eat. We bring the lactating moms here and the, their babies as well to feed before the rest come. So what we do is first thing in the morning, maybe around eight, we will open all of them and then bring them here they will relax here for a bit, eat some dry food before they actually go out to graze. And then this is also a second yard. So this is where we put our bucks and then we'll put the female here. Don't forget, we only cross them when it's breeding season. So if it's not breeding season, they are always separated. So we'll keep both Kalahari, Savannah and Co here. And then we'll keep our bucks on the other side so that they are not together. So let's come and let me show you another side here that we did. So inside here to the right hand side, is also another pen. This is a very big one. This is where we keep our locals. So as you guys know, I have both locals and the foreign breeds. So the one you're looking at is where we keep our locals. This pen, this is huge. This can basically accommodate thousands of locals, right? And they, they, this is where they play. You can see we have brachyra grass there, but they've been eating everything because we really not, the goal is not for them to graze here. The goal is for them to eat, make everything flat and they can play over here, right? Let me show you guys. This is the same land. You can see how much, what they've done to this side. But then the last part of this is the same brachyra grass, but here, we haven't, we don't allow them to go and play there. They only go to graze. So if you look at it, you could see how green that it is. And it's because this is a grazing yard. So again, if we want them to graze, the door is there. We open the door, they enter and they can graze from there. So it's all fence and they don't go out. You know, one thing I've learned about goats is they are so smart that if you do it a week time, they know exactly what to do. So the early morning, the moment we open them, they know that they have to go to their playing ground. So they will all go there. There is water there. There is some dry land, um, dry brachyria grass there, and they will eat. They will be there, eat, play, and then exactly maybe around 12 o'clock, they will all come here and basically start grazing, right? They graze for about three hours, and then we'll take them back to their playing ground. And exactly five o'clock, as you guys can see, the pen is empty. They are all match. The moment you open them, they will run all the way and go to their um, goat, goat houses and they all know where they stay. If you do it this way, it makes it easier. Your workers are more excited because you know, they are not running around chasing them. At this level and, or with this kind of planning, I can have thousands of goats as far as I have my food, which you guys know I also have. Right, so if you really want to do this well and do it as a business, yes, it's an investment. This wire mesh cost, this tick tree maybe costs a little bit, but not that bad. But if you do invest in it, then you can, you can have room to scale. As I always tell you, you guys saw the video as well. When I went through this town 
to look for gold to buy, local goods to come and add to my floor. Nobody is willing to sell. Nobody has it. You go to the abattoir, you tell them where they buy their goods to kill, they all go to Burkina Faso. So we need to start doing things like this to be able to feed ourselves, right? And the reason why you are probably not doing is because you don't have a well-fenced and demarcated place like this, right? Somebody might ask, what is the size of this land? This is probably maybe about an acre, not more than two acres because this entire land is five acres. So this, I'm doing this on about an acre. But the good thing is that all my feed source are not from here. It's only the grazing field that's here. The dry matter and everything you guys know, I cut them from the other land and I bring it here. But still, this is possible. If you have this land, you can still have maybe about, I don't know, 300, 200 goats here. Simple. And you can still make it work, right? So don't let me discourage you. Don't let anybody discourage you. It is possible. And that's why I'm sharing with you guys. Let me know in the comment below what you guys think. Um, but if you need any advice or anything, hit me up and we can talk. See you in another video.